Hello, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. On this episode, I'm gonna be, um, I've already unboxed it. I'm gonna be doing a video on the Turbo Lamic transmission control unit. In fact, this is actually a kit for an N54. It's even got our name on it, how cool is that? Basically what this kit is designed to do is allow you to install an 8HP70 or possibly an 8HP75 once the mapping's done into an E90, E92 or even an E91 N54 vehicle and everything work like OEM. So cruise control, You'll even get your gear display on the dashboard. The, the DME will have no idea that you've changed your transmission. It's that clever. So I wanna go through the kit, how it works, some reasons why you would wanna do it, and yeah, basically just try and make everybody else wanna buy one as well, because I think they're pretty cool. Uh, I do need to update our regular viewers. This right here is the Forge bottom end build that hopefully you saw the video that went up yesterday where I was talking up my 12 mil head bolts. Um, and there was some weird stuff going on with that. I should, I'm gonna be honest, that video was actually filmed on Friday, so four days ago, and it didn't go to plan. All of the test bolts that I did in this block, they never bound up, but when I'm filming, when you guys can see what I'm doing, we got that binding as I was doing those head bolts up. Um, I'd already sort of had a plan of what I wanted to talk about in the video, so I didn't deviate from that, but I do wanna let you guys know that I let this block with the head on it sit for a few days. So it's gone from sort of 20 degrees C up to 40 degrees C, because this shed gets hot when it's shut up during the day. So it's done some temperature changes, and then I wanted to check the bolts again. I have retorked of them. I have retorked them. Five of them went a little bit further. We're not talking much, but they are now all over 145 Newton meters, and I got those torque readings without the cracking or the binding going on. At this point in time, I'm pretty damn happy with it. Also, when I was messing around yesterday, I went even further on the test bolt. I really wanted to make sure that I'm not gonna be damaging or pulling the threads in this one. Uh, hopefully you saw the video as well where I tapped the 11 mil threads to 12 mil. You'll find it in the previous videos if you're interested. But yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on, some cheap head bolt upgrades that, if this works, could be a good option for people that are on the budget build side of things like we are. But that bolt there is now torqued to 189 Newton meters. And it hasn't pulled the threads. It's kind of crazy. Right, back to the controller. This thing is amazing. If you're wondering what the hell is he on about, it's those AHP. So you might have seen, we've been playing around with M54s for a few years now, and I did the DCT conversion in my E92. That must be coming up six or eight months and I absolutely love the DCT. My car makes okay power. It's making around 620, 630 wheel horsepower on its current tune. We have wound up a little bit from when it was on the dyno. Um, and the DCT holds it fine. However, it just won't launch. You can't launch it. That gearbox is great to abuse once you're moving, but trying to get it off the lights quickly, you'll either fry the tires or it just feels bad when uh, XHP is slipping the clutch trying to get it to do a zero to 100. But it is still quick but it just doesn't fill me with confidence. And I do know a few people in the States that have, they've gone fast with DCTs. In fact, uh, RK Tunes, he's a good example. He's got the F80 quarter mile world record. And he, I think he's only done low nines, maybe high eights. Can't remember exactly, but it's hard to make a DCT go fast off the line. And if you're a bit of a hoon, a bit of a street driver, and you want to do skids and be a bit of a, a knobhead with seven or 800 horsepower, I'm starting to think that a DCT is probably not the best way to go where the torque converter that you have in an 8HP, sorry, the gearbox is over there, that is an 8HP70, the torque converter sort of allows, allows for that silliness off the line, it allows you to be a bit more abusive, and you're not gonna burn these clutch packs out as fast as you will a DCT clutch pack. These things have the torque converter, which is always gonna be that, that gap between the power, I don't know why I keep pointing at this, sorry. They have a torque converter, I can show you one right here, there's a dog, but they have a torque converter and it works as sort of a, not a perfect join between the power the engine's making and the rest of the gearbox. They have the torque converter and then they've got like six clutch packs as well inside there. So you've got a lot more friction material to wear out in an automatic transmission. And these 8 HPs, they're using in the new M cars. And I've got to be honest, I've spent a lot of time watching Turbo Lamic videos and the things that the cars are doing that have these controllers is super impressive. You can actually get them completely flat shifting. So instant shift between well, any gear. Um, when I made this purchase from Turbo Lamic, he actually sent a warning saying, you must be careful if you have a high power car. He's had a few customers that have fitted these controllers, fitted the eight HP 70s, and they'll do a burnout. They'll start off in first gear and they'll get some wheel speed up, not realizing that the gearbox is going through the gears. He said the customers can't tell the gearbox is shifting. So it'll go from first to eighth real quick. And he said, within a few seconds, you'll have 300 kilometer an hour rear wheel speed, which isn't great. 
do a good burnout though. That's the plan. So my train of thought with the 8HP conversion is you can have a fast shifting car that you can also launch. I don't think, I don't think the hardware inside an 8HP is physically capable of shifting as aggressively or as quickly as a DCT. I know the computers will imply that it is an instant shift. Maybe it is, I don't know. We'll see what it's like once it's in the car, but I still kind of feel that a DCT car is gonna be quicker once it's moving. We will find out, we're gonna find out. Um, but just the fact that you can launch it, you can do repetitive launches, you can do trans brake skids, I think it's gonna be excellent. So let's talk about what this controller actually does. So the factory brain for the gearbox is actually inside the mechatronics unit, which we will get to in the installation process, but it actually has a computer in there which controls everything. So that gets signals from the car, telling it what load it's required, what the RPMs are doing. It gets certain lots of information to make the gearbox decide what gear to be in, what to do with the torque converter, what to do with the clutch packs, etc. And that computer is locked down to BMW's algorithms, I guess. Now, there are companies like XHP that have aftermarket software for the factory computers that are inside those boxes, but they also still have limitations and it stops you from putting that gearbox in the wrong vehicle. What this system does that now becomes the brain of the gearbox and it connects to the gearbox through this little connector here. Now factory 8HP70 connectors, they don't use all the pins because all they need is a CAN bus signal to connect to the computer. In fact, I've got one here. I'll even show you guys. We'll take this one out if I can get it out. It's tight. So that is a factory connector and you can see there, it's only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. So there's not a lot of communication needed because it's all CAN bus these days. What Turbo Lamech have managed to work out how to do, using these pins here, you make some modifications to the TCU and you give a direct connection between this controller and the solenoids in the gearbox. And I guess all the bits that control the oil pump, the torque converter, he must manage to do it all through that. I don't know how it works. I cannot believe he worked this out on his own five or six years ago. It's bloody impressive. Um, but that's basically what's happening. So this box is now controlling the solenoid, the shift solenoids, the torque converter directly, and it allows you to run custom software. Now it also, you may notice, it has another connector here. Now that is a female 6HP connector. You plug the factory 6HP connector into that, and that gives it connection to the car's CAN bus, and also, or basically everything to make the car think that there is still a 6HP in the car. He has managed to get gear displays on some models up to eighth gear, so it will actually show that you're in seventh or eighth. It does depend on the model of the cluster. But yeah, using that connection there, it connects into the E90 and everything works almost. Well, it does, it works as an OEM. All right, I'm getting a bit excited. I'm probably trying to talk about a few things, a few too many things. Let's talk about what you get in the kit. So first off, you do get a pin out for the main TCU connector. You can see there, there's 90 pins going into this little computer, which is pretty crazy. And it tells you all the stuff there. The main thing that stood out to me is the clutch input. And I probably will do it on the Flomax car. I will try and hook up a clutch pedal to the TCU so that we can actually clutch kick that car. It's not gonna happen straight away, but it'll be something we do in a month's time or something. We'll see how it goes. Um, so you get that, a little pin out so that you know if you wanna change anything or modify or fault find, you can. This is the N54 to 8HP70 adapter. This plate here will actually bolt up to the back of an N54, and you can see there are threaded bolts, and then the 8HP70 will bolt up to that. In fact, these are all the bolts that come with it. Can you have a quick look? Because I think there's a few extras in here. So that looks like it's going to be all the bolts to connect the adapter plate to the N54 block. I, I'm going to have to wait and see what everything is. Uh, something I did also notice with this kit, you do have these metal adapters here to adapt the 8HP transmission cooler, which is a 17 and a half mil cooler, to a 10 mil cooler, which is a 6 HP cooler line. That means that you don't even need to do anything with your transmission coolers. You simply fit that to your 8 HP and the factory N54 oil cooler for the transmission will work. Uh, it does come with a few extra pins. Now that's not 90 pins. I did originally think these might be for people that have got the universal kits, not the pre-wired kits. But when you start to have a look at all the extra features, having some pins so that you can actually add wires to the, the system if you want to do stuff that's not part of the pre-wired kit. I hope that makes sense. Like add a clutch pedal. Um, 
Turbo Dynamic do supply a shifter adapter. Now that will bolt in place of the N54 shifter, and it's actually designed for a F10 5 series shifter, which I thought I ordered from the UK, but I managed to order the wrong one. There are three part numbers, and out of the three, I got the wrong one, although it looks right. I'll show you in a second about that. Now, the big part of the N54 kit, or a big cost of the N54 kit, is this wiring harness. I'm gonna have to be honest, that wiring harness cost 560 euros, which I thought was a lot of money. The second I open up this packet, it's worth every cent. It is so well made, they are pinned so nicely, heat shrunk, they've got the protective sheath on them, sheathing, whatever it's called. They are OEM connectors or plugs where he can use them. And these things are expensive. If you're buying all OEM connectors, it does add up. And even this, we've got a custom 3D printed female connector. Man, I'm, I was actually blown away with the quality of the wiring harness. I think that's great. And now I've seen it in the flesh, it makes a lot more sense and I think it's totally worth it. We were gonna, uh, you might have seen, we were doing a video where we were trying to use a standard TCU 8HP45 in a 135. I'd actually said to Dave, if this doesn't work with the standard TCU, we'll just order a Lamic controller and I'll make the harness. Uh, it's not worth it. I will just buy that harness from Turbo Lamic because it's so good. Um, yeah, it would take me hours to replicate something like that and probably cost nearly just as much. Uh, what else did we get? Part of the Lamic kit, you do get a mode controller. So these uh, computer, yeah, transmission control units have seven or eight different modes and you can select your mode with the rotary switch there. Not sure where we're going to mount that in the car yet. It's something we'll work on. And it does have a, I think it is actually a CAN bus display. Uh, a CAN display to tell you what mode the transmission's in, if you're doing adaptations, trans brakes, transmission temperature, all that sort of stuff. Something else uh, that I have just thought about while I'm looking at that switch, this computer or transmission control unit does have an output for an auxiliary fan. So if you want to run a fan controller, that is something, well, a transmission fan, you can control it with the TCU, which is awesome. I'm out of breath. It's been a busy week. Right, what else can we do? In fact, I think that's probably about it. Um, yeah, that is basically what you get in the N54 kit. If you've got any questions about the kit, um, if you think about doing it, you'll kind of hit me up in the comments below. But tomorrow's video, my plan is to get the mechatronics unit out of that, and I will show you the modifications that we need to do to make it work with the Lamet controller. Guys, thank you very much for watching. A quick update. The mode is together. I'm kind of happy. And yeah, with any luck, we'll get the 8HP and that motor in the car this week. Fingers crossed. See you guys shortly.